Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video, and this is one of my first videos on Stargirls, so today we're going to be talking about episode 1 of season 1, titled Stargirls, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any Stargirl videos later this year. So yeah, I do plan on covering Stargirl, because especially after watching this episode, I really, really loved it. It was so good and I can't wait to watch all the future episodes this season. So please be sure to stick around for all those Stargirl videos because I'm very excited and hopefully you guys are as well. So, you know, this is going to be a new thing for the channel. For now, if it all goes well, we'll be doing this week by week. Okay, so episode one, like I said, it was amazing and it started off so strong. I think this is one of the strongest intros to a new show that I've ever seen. And so you begin... At Christmas time, you got Christmas music. Is this amazing car sort of chase scene where he's and I'm talking about Pat here, Stripesy, as he speeds to the fight that is ongoing with the Injustice Society against the Justice Society of America. So you have this, and it begins at the end of the Golden Age of Heroes. So this is Christmas, Christmas Eve. Most of the Justice Society of America is killed off by the Injustice Society of America, who consists of, as of right now, these are the members that we saw. Obviously, there's probably going to be some more members in the future. However, the ones we saw were Solomon Grundy, Icicle, Sportsmaster, Brainwave, The Wizard, and Tigress. So very similar to the members that you've seen in the past, say, animated shows, obviously in the comics, these are all at some point members of the Injustice Society of America. So those are the current members, we're probably going to see more. But anyway, so the JSA members, as of right now, in that specific fight, you had Wildcat, our man, Dr. Midnight, Starman, Sandman, it was his body, he was lying there on the ground, and also Jay Garrick's helmet, so you, therefore you can tell that Jay Garrick died there. And also there were Green Flames, and lots of people have been suggesting that this is actually Alan Scott, and Green Lantern died there. And I believe there was mention of Alan Scott recently in some interviews, or something to do with Stargirl. And, you know, he is heavily related to the JSA in the comics, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to suppose it was Alan Scott. And so we get a photo of the Justice Society of America, so there are other members that weren't in that specific fight and therefore you can sort of guess that maybe they are alive and those members are Dr. Fate who I love he's one of my favorite DC Comics characters also Hawkman, Hawkgirl and I believe I can make out Johnny Thunder and I can't make out anyone else I think that's all the members in the photo but they are the main members at the end of the Justice Society of America at the end of the Golden Age of Heroes so you can suggest that probably Dr. Fate's going to show up at some point, maybe Hawkman, maybe Hawkgirl, I don't know how likely they are considering they showed up on Legends, obviously it would be a different cast, like you know Stargirl showed up on Legends, we had the Justice Society of America, who was very different, we had like Obsidian and everyone, and obviously different cast members, which I really loved on Legends, but this is exciting to see some other stuff. Maybe this is, you know, because it's set on another Earth, maybe you can say, oh, the Justice Society, if they ever wanted to, you know, explain it, is just different because it's a different Earth, and especially after Crisis. So, anyway, those are the members that I can make out as of right now, but that fight scene at the start was so good. You got a great introduction to all the old members, and it really set the tone for it, and it was a great fight scene. I loved the way the camera was moving. There was lots of zooms and pans and... It was just very exciting, it was made to look a consistent fight scene and I really appreciated the way they shot it and I was really involved straight away and I knew that I would like this episode. So right at the end of that fight, Starman dies via an icicle and that's from Icicle, which then goes to a cut to young Courtney at the same time on that same day, same time on Christmas Eve and it's revealed basically or just so hinted that, you know, her dad is Starman and so you sort of go back to that later in the episode and she suspects it so we'll have to wait and see if that's the correct thing and we'll get some answers very soon but anyway so most of the episode in present day we've got young Courtney well obviously she's not that young like teenage Courtney at this age where she's moving away from LA where that first fight happened and obviously where the Justice Society of America was probably based and so you got her with Pat aka Stripesy and he is amazing, I think Luke Wilson absolutely killed it in this role and it kind of reminded me of, say, like Jesse L. Martin on The Flash. I think you always need like a more experienced actor to aid 
a younger cast. I think that's just like a thing that I really love about some of these shows. Because you've got like this mix of actors, you know, new and old and more experienced. So it's really great having Pat around in this whole episode and I'm sure the whole season. So you've got the young cast set up, you've got the stuff in the school kind of interesting i thought it was you know pretty good but i was more interested in the star girl stuff and you know the injustice society the justice society of america that stuff is obviously what us dc fans want to see and they really served on that stuff but yeah the school stuff is interesting obviously we didn't get that much in this episode they sort of set up some of the dynamics between some of the kids and so courtney also later finds this chest and so you get a sort of hint at this when they're moving, you know, Pat's like, don't touch this stuff. And you can kind of tell that this is setting up, you know, Stargirl, you know, her getting her staff eventually. So this happens, Courtney finds a chest and she finds a staff. And the stuff with the staff is really fun and it's very exciting. Basically, the staff is alive. It sort of takes Courtney on these journeys and she learns to, you know, use her gymnastic skills and that is one of the reasons why you know she can use this stuff so well compared to others but obviously only a specific person can use this stuff so there is some deeper reason behind that and that's obviously hinted at you know with her father potentially being starman we don't know if that's going to be true but there is something with inside of her that lets her control and use this stuff and so at one point in the episode she goes accidentally while well, she's training outside and the staff sort of leads her towards this drive-in that was mentioned earlier in the episode it's playing the goonies so some really nice callbacks in this episode also i gotta give a shout out to whoever chose to put barry man who put the bump it's a song it's absolutely fantastic it's literally one of my favorite songs you know before watching the show and it was such a great surprise so i love that callback you know it really kind of set the mood it felt like you know we could have been back in the 80s or something like that but also it feels kind of fresh as well so i really really like that and they also ended the episode with the credits playing who put the bump and i was just like hell yes you guys know what you're doing and i love it i love it so much and so also Let's go back to that drive-in. You've got her fighting off these bullies who were set up in school earlier in the episode. The staff blows up the bully's car and the bully's dad turns out to be a member of the Injustice Society of America and that is Brainwave. So as soon as you saw that reveal and that sort of just shot with them talking together and he was like, who was controlling this staff? You were like, oh, God damn it. I know what's gonna happen. And then you get the reveal with, you know, the hidden suit and then he goes to a graveyard and he talks to this guy called Jordan who turns out to be Icicle if you look up who Icicle is and that's his name in the comics and so he's still around he's still alive like all these other members probably of the Injustice Society so they're probably gonna resurface very soon in the next few episodes and so he says he killed Starman so it can't be Starman and you know Brainwave's like yeah I know that and so Brainwave talks to him and so you know that kind of sets up what's to come then you've got him actually tracking her down and so you got Stargirl facing off against Brainwave for the first time they have this little confrontation Stargirl is able to escape Brainwave uses his powers I think his powers are really cool I thought like I said the start of the episode was so good and I think that's partially due to how cool the VFX is obviously it's not perfect with some of the flying stuff however that start that opening scene Man, the VFX was on point, and that fight scene was so good, and it was very colourful as well, I really liked that. So, you know, you get to see Brainwave using his powers at the start, and then facing off against Stargirl, who obviously isn't Stargirl yet, but I'm referring to her as Stargirl rather than Courtney, I think it's just a bit more easy as of right now, because, you know, she's slowly going to become Stargirl, and so we end the episode with stripes being revealed and that is pat's you know big robot and i think that was part of the stuff that was being brought in because you know he obviously brought it from la all the way out here so this is a big reveal that ends the episode and i thought it was just such a good episode it was such a good pilot so much fun but also it's very nostalgic with you know the songs and with the way that the mood is set 
and it's also nostalgic for DC fans. You get so involved in the opening. It's just like a DC fan's dream to see this fight between the Injustice Society and the Justice Society of America in live action. It was just amazing. And so that's about it for my review. However, let's talk a little bit about a potential crossover. Could it happen? So one of the showrunners of Stargirl recently did an interview about a month ago or so where she said that there have been talks between the Flash showrunners and the Stargirl showrunners to do a Flash and Stargirl crossover. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. That would be really exciting. I think the tone very much so fits with that. Also, I think Supergirl would be a great candidate. I think the tone is very similar to those two shows. Obviously, at points you have some more kind of ruder stuff in terms of the humor, you know, with Pat's son and stuff. So that was kind of funny. And I was like, oh, this is not really like the CW. So I guess, you know, because it was made for DC Universe and it's now on the CW as well. You know, they probably cut some of that, but I watched the DC Universe version of the episode. So the 53 minute version rather than like the 45, 42 minute on the CW. I don't know what they cut because I didn't watch that. However, you've got this and I think this show would really, really work very well with The Flash or Supergirl crossing over. So I think because there have been talks already and obviously they're very confident in Stargirl and people are loving, you know, the first episodes. People have seen episode two and three. They're saying it's absolutely great. It's one of the best new DC things. And I agree with this episode. Like, it was so good. I did not expect it to be this good. So I think a crossover will come. It won't be in season one because they filmed it all already. And I think we'll see a season two crossover with one of our shows. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video and you want to see more Stargirl videos, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Share this video around. Tell people I'm making Stargirl videos because it's such a great episode one that I want to continue making these videos. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.